In this video, we're going to learn how to take the code behind code and take that into a view model so you can get started on implementing MVVM in your application. So here we are in Visual Studio 2019. This is just a file new Xamarin Forms application. You can see it on the left example code that comes out of the box. On the right, you can see it running on the iOS simulator. Um, and typically, if you've watched multiple of my videos, then you know that I start with updating the title. Um, I'm not going to do that this time because this application will allow you to update the title yourself with anything that you want. Wow, I'm just giving you all that power. That is crazy, right? So let's see how to implement something with a code behind and from there um, let's see how we can transform that into something that works with a view model and and implements basically the MVVM pattern. Um, so for this, I'm going to use a couple of things, an entry and a button. So let me remove all these labels right here. Um, and I'm going to add this little entry and I'm going to give this a name just so we can reference it in our code behind. So let's name this my entry. You can name this anything you want. Um, don't need to add anything else here. Well, maybe a little margin so that it look, looks nice. So let's make it 20 and 20. Then let's add a button here that doesn't need a name, but we're going to add the clicked handler. Um, so we have a button clicked here already. And let's give this a little text so that it shows up. Um, so update title, there we go. And whenever I save this with XAML hub reload, it will update automatically. So that's really cool. Um, when you're running the app, this works on the iOS simulator, also on the Android emulator, and also on your physical device, if you're testing with that. So that is a big productivity boost. Um, so actually, let me update this label right here as well. So this is welcome to examine form. So this is our, our title label right here. So let's give that a little name before you forget my title label, there we go. Um, and now we have have all the things set up. So by giving this a name, um, this is going to generate a variable in our code behind. So every XAML page that we see here has a code behind, which is named mainpage.xaml, and the code behind file is then mainpage.xaml.cs. Um, and you know, you, you need to have that file um, because it needs to wire up some things for the XAML. But typically, if you want to, you know, implement MVVM um, and make your, your your code more maintainable and more testable, um, then you don't want to put that much stuff in your um, code behind file, because that makes it very tightly coupled to your UI and your code is in there. And that, you know, let, let's just see. So we got this in place. Now, now let's go to that code behind file. And you can see that we have this button clicked handle right here. And now we can reference the my entry um, and the, the, the my was it my title label, there we go. Uh, so actually, let's just implement this code, my title label dot text is my entry dot text, there we go. So whenever we click that button, now, um, the label should update with whatever text we put in the entry. Now, this is, of course, a very, very simple sample. But you know, if you've built an app this way, then you can imagine that this is maybe a form that you should fill out. So it has a lot of entries, um, a couple of buttons to reset the form and to save the form or to cancel things. Um, and that is all going going on in this code behind it, that makes it really hard to test, right? Because all you can't do unit tests on these event handlers, you would need to have automated UI tests that actually click the button for you. And even if you do that, it's very hard to um, get the outcome from that. And so, you know, if you want to make it more testable, and also, you know, it's very tightly coupled to the UI. So whenever you want to change this button, you have to um, um, switch that event around and do all the things. So this is this is not really great, right? It's it's good to do maybe prototyping or if your application is really small, um, to start out with this, this is perfect. Uh, but at some point, you probably want to switch to a more structured way of, of doing your code. Well, let's just quickly stop and restart the code right here. Um, so you can see that this actually works. And then we're going to work on rewriting the same thing, but now using MVVM. So basically, imagine that this is your application, um, and how you're doing it. And I'm going to show you now how to transform that into a more MVVM way. So let's just do I don't know, subscribed yet something, you know, trivial, I don't know, update title and boom, you can see it updates to subscribed yet. So that is that is pretty cool, right? It just does whatever we intended it to do. Now, 
let's do this more in a MVVM way. To do that, the first thing we're going to add is the VM part of MVVM, which is the view model. So let's just add that, which is just a regular class. So I'm opening up the solution explorer here, going to my shared project and right click on that and add a new class because it's just a typical normal class, a view model. There's nothing special about it. So let's name this main page view model or a convention that is more specific to examine forms is maybe to use a page model. Um, the terms are kind of, you know, used together, but this concept can also be used with UWP, WPF, um, basically any interface that works with XAML or not even XAML because MVVM is more like a pattern um, that that goes beyond the programming languages and that kind of stuff. But you know, I'm showing you this in Xamarin form. So main page model, let's just name it like that. The name doesn't really matter unless you're going to use a framework that has this convention. But now I'm already giving you all this information that might be too much. So let's just focus at the task at hand. Um, and in a page model or a view model, um, you typically want to work with properties. So let's add a property um, string for the entry. So um, the entry value and make sure that it's a property that is very important in this case. So um, a property is defined by adding this getter and setter right here. And also let's add some a property for public string, um, the title value. There we go. So same thing title value get set. There we go. Um, and we need something that has the event, right? The button clicked event um, in kind of the MVVM way. We are using commands for that. So that also needs to be a property. So let's make this a command. It's not um, known right now. I think we need to let IntelliSense solve this and we just need to add the using Xamarin forms here at the top. Um, and we're going to make this um, change title command. There we go. Um, again, this needs to be a property uh, to make the data binding work more on that in a little bit. Um, so now we have all of this set up and what we can do is um, now make this command to actually do something. So this change title command is a new command. There we go. And that new command, we can um, give an action. So here we go. Um, you can see here the, the um, IntelliSense is already helping us. We can do an action execute. We can do an action with an object. So you can also provide parameters that go into this command um, and the can execute. So you can actually determine like, hey, can this command execute right now? So imagine you have a form and the form is not valid. It, it contains invalid data. Um, then you can set the can execute to false. And um, whenever the control supports it, the, the, the control might be disabled or something like that. Um, and there's a couple of variations that, that you can do here, but we're going to use a very simple form and I'm going to use an inline action right here. You can also do this in a separate method. It's that what you want, but I'm going to use this, this Lambda right here. And what this is going to do is um, just set the title value to the entry value. So we are going to get this value here from this entry that's going to be put in the entry value. And we're going to update the title value, which is going to be the label here at the top, the title, we're going to update it with that. And this button is going to trigger that command right here. So that is what we want to do. That is more the MVVM way. And now suddenly, you know, if we call here to a method that is maybe in um, our, our service calling out to a REST API, that is code that we can test. And also, if we want to change the view, we can totally do that without, you know, having to go through the button clicked handlers and, and whatever. Um, we just have to reference this command and you can change the complete view if that's what you want. Um, so now we have all this in place. Let's go back to our uh, main page dot example code behind. So what we can do is basically throw this out. So this is just a tiny optimization. But again, uh, imagine that this is a big page, uh, we can delete all this code, which is a good thing. And the only thing you want to do here now is set the binding context. And the binding context is uh, where you specify like, hey, you should look at this view model, I'm going to explain this whenever we are looking at the example. So for now, just set this to the new main page model, there we go. Um, and now it knows that, you know, that is going to be where all of our MVVM um, kind of magic is, is coming from. So we have that set up. So it's going to look at our main page model here. And then here in our example, here's where the real interesting things are going to happen. So we can get rid of all this X name stuff right here. So no more X name, we're not going to do that. Um, but what we're 
we're going to do is use data binding and data binding is a little bit of magic. So data binding, we that is that is something that is built into like the XAML into the binding engine. Um, that is something that is provided by Xamarin Forms in this case, but also in UWP and, and WPF. Um, and what we can do here is now for this text, we're going to say binding. Um, so we have to have this, this curly bracket right here, and then we can say binding, and then I'm going to say um, title value. I think that was it. So this has to be the name of that property. So title value, the name of that property that we've specified here, and it has to be a property. I can't emphasize this enough because if it's not a property, it's not going to work. It also needs to be public. So um, we have that. And then also we have to catch like the entry um, value as well. So here we're also going to say text is binding um, entry value. That's what we named it, right? And it's a bit hard um, because we don't get the IntelliSense because this view doesn't know anything about the view model that's behind it. So, you know, it's it's it doesn't give you that IntelliSense. There is a little trick to actually enable that. Um, maybe I will make a little video on that later. Please let me know down in the comments if that's something that you are interested in. And I can imagine that you will have more questions than answers from this video. So so if anything is unclear, please let me know down in the comments and I will make follow up videos on that. Um, so now we have this set up for the text, you know, this is a pretty simple example. Um, so the binding, um, this typically means that, you know, the text that you're putting in here is going to uh, into the title value that again, the binding engine will take care of that. Um, and also, you know, the also kind of like the other way around um, that the title will be updated um, from whatever value that we put in there. Um, now for the button, we still have this button clicked wired up right here. Um, and we don't want to use events, right? We want to use commands. So um, we also have this command property on here and you can see the command parameter property in here as well if we want to um, put parameters in here. But for now, we're just going to do the command and we're going to again say binding um, and we're going to say, what did I name it? Let's go to our view model right here, our change title command. There we go. So let's just put that in here. So you can see it doesn't just work for text. It also works for commands. It also works for the margin or basically any property that you can see here is a bindable property mostly. So you can bind to anything that you want. Now this is going to trigger that command. This is going to get that entry value and it's going to put it in this, this title value. So we got everything wired up here, especially because you know, the only thing kind of that you want to do in your code behind is set this binding context. Uh, whenever you're using an MVVM framework that might happen automatically. Um, so I've also seen a very good video recently from my good friend, James Montemagno, um, where he's talking about like, when should you still maybe put code in your code behind? Um, and I think his answer in very short is, um, whenever it has to do with your view, it's perfectly fine to put code in your code behind. So whenever you're maybe doing an animation or that kind of things, it's perfectly fine to put it in your code behind. Please find the link here popping up on the screen or down in the video description below to get more info on that. Um, I'm focusing on the mechanics, the, the functionality, the actual code. So I'm going to show you this with a view model. And now I'm going to stop running this application and I'm going to um, um, run it again because I've changed a lot of code. So let's see. And I'm going to warn you, I'm going to fail right here. This code is not going to give us the expected result. So you can see I didn't initialize it with a value now the the title value. So there's nothing going to be here right now. But whenever I put something in here, um, our awesome title, and I'm going to click the update title, <gasps> nothing happens. And that is a very interesting thing. I'm going to show you. So if we go in here into our view model, um, let's put a breakpoint right here. And we're going to see that this is actually called. So, you know, everything is wired up. Um, the command is called. We can see the title value actually has our awesome title right here. Um, and I didn't change the value. So um, the, the incoming value right here, the entry value is still going to be the same. Um, but so, but everything is working. Why doesn't it show? And that again has to do with like that XAML kind of um, data binding engine because we need to let the UI know um, that something has changed. So before that would happen kind of automatically because um, we were doing it in the code behind and we were referencing the XAML automatically. So it knows like, hey, I got this updated property and I need to show it in the UI. Now we kind of put this abstraction layer in between here in the, in the form of a view model. So we need to let the UI know in some way that it has updated. Um, now you might have heard this before if you've been looking into it. And what we need to do is implement the I 
notify uh, with the right thing here I notify property changed so it doesn't know this right now so let IntelliSense help us for a little bit uh, we need to add the using system dot component model there we go um, and then it will give us red squigglies and say we need to actually implement the interface so let's do that and whenever we do that you can see we gain a public event property changed event handler um, so now um, other classes can hook into this property changed event um, and catch whenever a property is changed. So, uh, and this happens automatically. So whenever our XAML sees that a, uh, the, the, the view model implements the I notify property change interface, um, it will automatically hook into this property changed event because this interface says that um, this should be available, right? So the XAML binding engine will automatically subscribe to this property changed event. And now it knows whenever a property changed that it should update the UI accordingly. Now there's still something that we need to do. Um, technically we need to, you know, e each time let this, uh, that some property change, we need to um, fire this event. So we need to propagate that to the XAML. Um, and I'm going to add a little helper method for that that you can basically copy paste and, and use that. Um, so let's just add that right here. Public uh, void on property changed. There we go. And string property name so that we specify which property has actually changed. And what we're going to say is then property change. We're going to check that for null um, because if, if no one subscribed to this, then it's going to be null and then we're going to have exceptions. That's not what we want. Uh, property change dot invoke. So we're going to invoke this event. And I think the first um, parameter here has to be the sender. So that's going to be this because this class is sending it. And then we have to specify the new property changed event arcs. Um, and I think that has to have like the property name that actually changed. Yes, so we're just gonna specify that with our property name that we are getting into our own method right here. So now that we've got this in place, um, you can also do this on the setters for your properties, of course, um, but I'm just going to put it here in the command. So let's just say on property changed and I'm going to use name of, um, so we, change the title event uh, title value. So let's do this title value right here. And now we're going to let the, the XAML know, the UI know that our title value has changed and it should update that accordingly. So let's stop and restart this one and see if that actually happens. Um, now this is this is a very annoying thing that you have to implement over and over again for each kind of um, view and view model that you might have. So um, that can be pretty boring pretty quickly. Um, of course, there are better ways to do this. Again, let me know in the comments and I'll make follow up videos on that on how you can do that automatically. Or again, if you're using a MVVM framework, then that might happen for you automatically already. Um, so let's hear our awesome title let's put it in here again and do update title and boom you can see that it now updates accordingly and we did that by implementing the i notify property change and this should be like the basics to go from your code behind code to um view model code. If you're just getting started with this MVVM stuff, then this is a lot to take in. I fully realize that. So just take it small, tinker a little bit with this example, see if you can implement your own kind of mechanism that you want to do. Um, and maybe take your current application and try to convert at least one of the things to more like your MVVM approach. Um, and like I said a couple of times during this video, if there's something that you cannot figure out, please let me know down in the comments or maybe join the Discord server. Also, the link for that is in the video description um, so you can ask questions to me and also other pi people in the community which is uh, really great because they're very nice and always ready to help so go check that out um, I will definitely make some follow-up videos on you know more what is MVVM how to do a little bit more advanced stuff I guess uh, maybe some other things that you give me ideas for down in the comments so thank you so much for watching another one of my videos please click that like button if you've liked this video and check if that subscribe button is already on as well because I'd love to have you as a subscriber on my channel everything else i would like to see you for my next video keep coding